Welcome to Open Your Reality. Philip K. Dick was one of the most acclaimed science fiction authors of the last half of the 20th century. Thanks to him, we have movies like Blade Runner, Total Recall, and Minority Report. While he actually appeared to be an average guy in the few videos we can still see of him, his life was actually quite turbulent. Dick's life was not emotionally easy, and he seemed troubled throughout his entire existence. Married five times with three children, and thought to use drugs and experiment with LSD. He also had frequent visions of his own death, including an attempt to end his life in 1972 by overdosing on a sedative, which fortunately didn't work. Despite the drug use allegations, he just never stopped writing. By the time of his death, he had published more than 120 short stories and 44 novels. Think about that, 44 novels. That's about 44 more than most aspiring novelists. Dick was born in the cold Chicago winter of 1928. As early as 1954, when he was 26 years old, Dick wrote about precognition in his novel, The World Jones Made which is set in the year 2002 in a post-apocalyptic Earth. Based off Dick's own experiences, the main character in that book was a precog who could see one year into the future. No movie adaption was ever made, but the idea was thrown around in 2009, but never went any further. Dick's novels often referenced precognition, and Dick himself believed he had this ability. On top of precognition, Dick also heard voices, or at least a voice. As a young man taking the physics portion of a college entrance exam, Dick was startled to see that he did not understand eight of the ten questions on the test. Suddenly, he heard a voice explain to him, in a completely understandable way, exactly what he needed to know. As a result, he received a perfect score on the test. Was this voice his higher self? A spirit guide? Or maybe a channeled entity? He heard the same voice again years later, when it explained to him what was happening in a television documentary that he had difficulty understanding. This was not his first experience with visions and hearing voices though, but the voice he heard was the same voice he had heard years before while taking the college entrance exam. This voice may have been the beginning of a channel presence, Dick called Vast Active Living Intelligence System, or Phallus for short. Dick believed the voice to be an alien presence. The intense communication also included visions and lasted for two months, leading him to refer to this period of his life as 2374 for February and March of 1974. During the next eight years, he wrote thousands of pages about his visions and voices. As a result, his novels were more autobiographical than they were science fiction. As a simulation theorist myself, I believe everything we experience is just information. In this sense, Dick was receiving information that most people do not receive or cannot access. Perhaps this was because his third eye was so wide open that he was a receiver or conduit for channeled information. In any event, it seemed to have made him go a bit mad, as he seemingly didn't understand it. I suppose it would be the same for anyone though. What happened to Dick is actually not too all uncommon. There are entities in the astral world that are looking to communicate, and if you're open enough, they'll find you. Some are good, and some are not so good. In Dick's case, Vala seemed to be a good entity. Although Dick reported only sporadic communications with Vallis until 1974, after that date, the communications became fairly frequent and routine. Vallis gave him advice on improving his health, his appearance, and his financial situation. Dick also credited the voice with saving the life of his young son by describing the medical condition the boy suffered from and urging Dick to get the child immediately to a doctor where they discovered the child had the exact condition the voice described to Dick. As a result, a prompt surgery saved the boy's life.
Dick believed the voice he heard may have also been from God, or at least from some higher power. He wrote continuously about what he experienced. He ended up writing thousands of pages and hundreds of thousands of words in his attempt to make sense of it all. As a consequence, he decided his next book would be based on the voice. He intended his 1981 book, Valis, to be a trilogy. It ended up being more of a biographical presentation of Dick's visions and voices than a book that fit in the science fiction genre. As one reviewer put it, quote, he's not looking for aliens, he's looking for the meaning of life, unquote. Tragically, due to his sudden death in 1982 at the age of 54, Dick never completed the trilogy. In February 1975, Dick wrote a letter to a friend telling her about a dream he had just had, where he saw a, quote, stark, single horrifying experience, inert, but not still. A man lay dead, on his face, in a living room between the coffee table and the couch." Unquote. He followed the letter with another one in May 1975, in which he said he was scared. He added, What scares me most, Claudia, is that I can often recall the future. Almost exactly seven years after the first letter, Philip K. Dick's dead body was found. You got it face down in his living room wedged between the coffee table and the couch. Without realizing it, he had accurately predicted the circumstances surrounding his own death. Some reports say he died of a stroke. Others claim it was a congestive heart failure. Either way, it seems pretty clear to me he had predicted how his own death would take place. Dick died in March of 1982, shortly before the release of the movie Blade Runner, which is based off his book do androids dream of electric sheep? He at least saw 20 minutes of the finished product and was glad to see that the film preserved his vision of the story. So, were all of Dick's writings just science fiction? I think not. I believe a lot of what Dick wrote was autobiographical. During his life, he received many communications from Vallis, had dreams and visions about the future and spent the rest of his life trying to understand why he gained such supreme knowledge. Dick liked to make the claim he had total recall of the future. Dick's stories typically focus on the fragile nature of what is real and the construction of personal identity. His stories often become surreal fantasies as the main characters slowly discover that their everyday world is actually an illusion assembled by powerful external entities. To me, this resonates with simulation theory, in that all we see and experience is just a virtual construct that is fluid and adaptive. I also like that Dick uses the plot devices of alternative universes and something called simulacra, which is the likeliness of a person or thing, and he appeals to the masses with fictional worlds inhabited by common working people rather than galactic entities, which is always so common. If Dick was still alive today and a screenwriter in Hollywood, I'm sure he would be writing some blockbuster films for us. Well, I hope you enjoyed this short video on the amazing and turbulent life of Philip K. Dick. He led quite an extraordinary life and was a prolific writer as well. Let me leave you with this interesting fact about Philip K. Dick. In 2005, a team of roboticists at the University of Memphis began a project to create a lifelike android, and they chose Philip K. Dick as their template. The android named Phil was made to resemble Dick physically and to mimic his speech patterns. In 2006, David Hansen, one of the leads on the project, took the Philip K. Dick head on a plane and lost it. It has never been recovered to this day. You can read this fascinating story about artificial intelligence and the android Phil in David Duft's book, How to Build an Android. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and consider subscribing to my channel for more content like this. I'd love to have you. If you wish to add anything about the life of Philip K. Dick, please do so in the comment section and I'll try to respond to everyone. Thank you for coming with me this far. I'll see all of you guys in the next video coming soon.